we are going to be now looking at um, Matthew 25, verse 5, where it says, But while the bridegroom withheld, they all dozed and slept. And in King James, it says, While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. So we'll be looking at my notes here, um, which will be helping. I am going to be bringing in another verse. Um, we're going to be, I'm going to try to go to, through two verses. Some of this stuff we've already discussed, and so in discussing it, I don't have to belabor it um, because we've already we've already discussed some of the premises in setting this up from verse yeah. one and all the way through. But as a review from last time, what we were talking about, we were talking about specifically about how the um, we were talking about our vessels of light that we are we are making because when it said that they had oil and they had their vessels, it was garments of light. Um, and that the wise were doing that. We were talking about them dying to self. We had the Hebrew word um, death that came in there. We were also discussing about how really until we become um, within the oneness principle that as fractals in ego is actually a hypocrite. We're just playing a part. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, for me personally, I, I kind of had to wrestle with that because I, I don't like the word hypocrite, but that's really mm -hmm. just my ego that's fighting against it through pride and perfectionism yeah. going, I'm not a hypocrite. Well, you're playing a part. <laughs> so technically you are, well, <laughs> you know, that's what the ego is. Really, it's sure. because in, hypocrisy just means that you know something and you're mm -hmm. not really, you're saying you're mm -hmm. acting differently than to the, than to the, um, the intention right one who indulges is it's it's one who has the practice of claiming to have standards or beliefs but does not conform to them right but it really in the fullness of, of, of what we know is that if there's an intention we only know the partial intention because no one's come the full manifested potential yet and so really we are simply playing the part and that's the mm -hmm. whole so thing right here in the positive narrative we're, we're really we're playing a measure and then the full measure isn't fully released. So we're simply playing a part that isn't fully expressed. So it's a positive way to look at hypocrisy without in the negative. Mm -hmm. We're not doing it. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, I I'm just, I'm just saying that it was something that I personally had to wrestle mm -hmm. through it um, because I remember that one of the most difficult things that I had when I was in the church, when I was in the judging phase, because mm -hmm. also it, it means to decide and to judge. So a hypocrite, right? It, I'm just looking at the definition of where it came from, is that within the church, when we're judging other people or saying that they're in hypocrisy, we're just, we're judging other people, but we're judging ourselves. And so, yeah. you know, I've had to just kind of wrap <coughs> through that mindset of going, you know, if I'm going to judge anyone, I need to start with me first. Yeah. I mean, that's really, that's all that judging should be, is our right. own judging of our own part that we are playing and just that mirror principle of saying, you know, whatever I'm seeing in somebody else that I don't like, that's me. <laughs> it's something I don't like in me. And so I'm putting it out there as it's yeah. somebody else when it's just me. It's me. Yeah, we're just playing. Yeah. The we're just playing the part. And so until the part releases a new measure and a new part, then it's, um, it's just the measure that we have. So in talking about this, um, in going through taking and receiving the anointing, the oil, mashaka, um, that this anointing is having to do with our garments of light. And we were talking about how the people have been dimmed and that even the, the word for lamp in light shows that the beginning portion of that word is lamed, it's instruction. And then the pay has been inserted on the inside of the word. So we know that the mouth that is speaking revelation to you is meant for inward instruction. That is gonna give you the power of mother and father, the revelation that they that are connected to one another for you to deal with your fallen flesh. So we were discussing about how this, this message was actually very hopeful because this measure is coming and this measure is actually within each one of us. And so that's the only thing that I want to summarize from last week's conversation is this anointing ability is within every single one of us. Because when you look at the root word itself, so if I go back here, um, this mashak, which also means met to measure, and this is from mashacha, meaning to anoint, that really the anointing comes from the activation of the oneness principle. And so this is laying dormant in its, in its, in its source by, you know, without being activated, what we call zero point, 
um, mashach, mashach is dormant within every single individual. We all have this potential within us that is just waiting to be activated. And the activation in the Aramaic would be from the Aleph principle, where in the Hebrew word Mashiach, there's a yod that's been placed within. So there's a vision that needs to be placed within you. But this is the same, this is the same word. This is for anointing and to be smeared with oil. So um very interesting to see this and that that is what is our garments of light and it's coming through the instruction so that we can become a light and to become a light and to shine i love that i mean it's just yeah. the instructions are right there if we dig so now having that as our foundation we're moving on to while the bridegroom withheld they all dozed and they slept so the very first word that we see is in a static form. So again, this is from zero point. This would be source creator. Um, this would be us in our potential in zero point and the two letters that we have. So this is when, after, wall, and were. So in the potential, in zero point, cough, dalit. So we have cough, which is talking about uh, taming us and bending us cough pay to the languages that bring forth revelation which is the door to go inwardly that where we find we are weak and feeble that we need to deliver ourselves from that's cough dalit cough dalit and then in from that moving on so again so this is this is the cup that needs to be filled and this has a degesh in it so it means that it's been pierced because of going inwardly and uh, being able to gather what we need and assemble what we need <coughs> that will allow us to be weaned and ripened because we went through the consuming fire that, that was able to purify us. And that's why this first word mm -hmm. is talking about zero point. It's, it's, it's like, here's source, you know, there's no, um, when we're at the zero point, there's no potential, there, it's potential, but there's no, what is the word that I'm looking for? Um, distortion. There's no distortion. It is as mm -hmm. it is in, in the fullness of the becoming. It's in the zero point position. Is there anything you wanted to add to that with the cough, Dalit? Mm -hmm. And again, we know that Dalit has the Tav that is added to Dal, the weak and feeble. And so this whole thing in this potential are those who have been marked mm -hmm. with the covenant of love that are exempt from judgment. You know, so you're, you're static you, you've got all this potential, but you're just, you don't have any distortion either way. So that's where we're starting with this. And then we talk about um, the next word, meaning delay and tarry. And this one, I used to have personally, and I'm sure Ken, Ken will have a lot that he can add to this word. I used to have a lot of fear when it came to this word, because it is a word that means to procrastinate, to loiter, and to be behind. And when I was in the narrative, and I might get a little emotional when I talk about this because I'm so grateful that some of this stuff has been delivered from me because I remember, and Ken used to tell me, you know, it's not your job to save the whole world, Carrie. <laughs> I think if you said it once, you, how many times did you say it to me? Three. <laughs> oh, he's being... <laughs> <laughs> he's being kind it was a lot more than that over the course of 10 years. yeah over the course of 10 years trust me and and uh you know even within probably the past couple of years he said it too because my heart you know it is for the people and you know there was a lot that had to be changed with that um but this is where i think it's so beautiful <sighs> with the language is that in its static position so the root of it is alif uh het resh the activation point, point is the vav that has been added on the inside. So what this says, so to give hope, the, I, for me, seeing this was huge, but for other people that might be watching this as, as a teaching, is that there is the, this, there's a message that's coming <laughs> that is going to be able to help connect and pierce people within our, their hearts. And so there is a heart connect that is going to be made available for people and it's going to pierce them and it's going to be given to those that that were loitering and that were behind. Um, but it's still going to allow them this piercing of the heart is huge. 
You know, if, if all of a sudden that people find out that maybe they, they didn't do what they needed to, they tarried a little or they were loitering behind, this piercing of their heart is a good thing because in the very word is the, is the head, which means to bring forth life. And this is why I think it's so beautiful that in the process of even procrastinating and lawyering and maybe not doing what we were supposed to do before the appointed time, this piercing happens within the heart in order to bring forth life of the covenant. And I, and I, I just, I think that's beautiful. So every Hebrew yeah. word, yes. an Aramaic word, when there's, if, it, if you're encountering a problem or you see something in there, the resolve mm -hmm. itself is always found within the letters. The letters are always going to resolve the issue, the tension that is that is being created by what you are seeing with what the definition of the word is. And then like, well, how do we resolve this? How do we get rid of that tension to bring it back to that zero point place of neutrality, which is really the place of rest? This is entering mm -hmm. into the place of rest. So how is this resolved? It's resolved because those who have become one, because the Aleph is Aleph Lamed Pei, those who have become one are the teaching shepherds that come forth with the mouth that speaks revelation. They've already tamed and yoked their beast ego. And through the process of that, they have eradicated it and now they've become one. And that is through their teachings. And so they're going to be teaching and sharing that which they learned. And so they're coming to those who had their heart pierced in order to bring them life because Chai, the number eight, um, it's spelled Het Yod Tav and, or Het Yod Tet. And the Tet means to wrestle in the mud, in the basket with a serific message. So they're coming with a serific message that you're going to have to wrestle with, but it's all about bringing life to raise those up from the poor and destitute place because if you if you felt like you were left behind and then you tarried you're probably going to feel pretty low at that point and feeling pretty poor and destitute but they come with this message to raise you up so that you too can be a first fruit and we've talked many times about the difference between the barley bride and the wheat bride is that the barley bride is one that was winnowed through the breath of the spirit before the appointed time versus the wheat bride so I see this in that position because, again, we're talking about the wise and foolish. In the very beginning, the bride and the groom both came to speak to these individuals, this group, about the Mashiach anointing and how to do it. Mm -hmm. And so that the people that have had their heart pierced, they will be able to have this message presented to them that will bring them life. It's just, I, it's beautiful. Yeah. Um <clears throat> And it really, the other thing I wanted to share, and I'm sure you saw that too, Ach is brother. Yeah. Well, I, I was going to share this too, that again, everything's perspective to me, basing as it or as it. And even with the cough doll, that, you know, grasping the door <clears throat> is a position of perspective because I can grasp the doorknob to enter in, or after I entered in, I grasp the concept. Everything is perspective of forward, a, a vantage point yeah. of where you are. So those that have entered in to grasp the concept of the of what the door is, um, because Dalit Lamed, right? We're talking about the revelation of entering into the frequency of teaching. But then it's just a different perspective to see the language, because in that word too, to tarry is also light. And so it's the separation mm -hmm. of light by those that have entered in. So those that have become the teachers to separate light and and het is we were talking about this today with jesse actually het mm -hmm. vav tet and which morphs to het vav uh tov and mm -hmm. so separating out to connect by tet by choice and then the choice connects you to het vav tov another way of spelling it is by separating you're connected to love mm -hmm. and so the choice has allowed you to connect to the greater to be sealed in love so in this word we have light and love we have light and love in this so because right? so just just so that we can show it in fact i'm going to pull us back up um to the word so that i can highlight the letters Aleph of resh and i think you know this regina the Aleph of resh right here is or um mm -hmm. is light and so we have light 
light in the middle of life or light <laughs> life separated separated um but it's within light and so for like when i'm seeing this i'm like oh so life is found in the light right but <laughs> but this is all about this is this whole this and not, i don't want to take too much of the time up but so this this, this is the brotherhood of light <laughs> this is the brotherhood of light yeah. that has rightly separated because this whole paragraph is about while the bridegroom right those that uh what is it while the bridegroom withheld they all dozed and slept right um but there's those that are awake right but anyways this is just rightful separation of being on one side of the door or the other one is reaching at it don't worry don't tarry because those that have entered in are going to show you the way because this is exactly the transition of becoming the measure that is within us all that those have reached and there's those that are tarrying and they're going to come in to enter in and this is exactly kind of what we're doing right now we're simply in a place and we are releasing perspective of um you know of information we're just simply releasing it from our vantage point and so we're fulfilling this role by separating out the light and again to just for continuity's sake moving into the next word when ken was saying that this message is going to come the very next word is judges and we were talking about this last week that the judges that the word dull at noon means the door of life and with that, the judge is one who restores life. The goal is that the rules, the goal of that, uh, the goal of one that rules or judges is to bring a pleasant and righteous life to the people. Right. And so as the judges, because we've spoken that before, that the judges are the mm -hmm. gardeners that are coming to help those that are mm -hmm. in the GAN in order to bring them life because they found it. And and so we're actually seeing that right here. The light garden, right. And right. Right, absolutely. Because that's really the, the light, the place of light is the judges are bringing life to those that were poor and destitute and bringing forth that message. Right, and it's just, I don't look at the next, I don't like looking in the next word because it sets you up really to fail because it, it really short, it gives, it shortens the Ruach just to release organically, but um, as, and as we know in everything is inculcation that separation, proper separation in, in the higher narrative is a merciful act of self adjudication. That's how we're able to separate to see the fullness of the world. Whoa. Airplane. It's an airplane. I have the windows down because I. It's okay because I've heard it before. We've had airplanes in the background. We've had lawnmowers in the background. Can it's you, all good. Can you just get out and flag them over a little bit <laughs> so we don't hear? I know. Yeah, it's uh, so right by the highway here. Yeah. So I know that Ken says he doesn't like looking at the next word, but I do for continuity's sake, because generally they're all connected to well, one you've, another. Well, you've so. you said this. I, I haven't seen her teaching, so I'm just here as a bystander, and I just like to follow it. And I love the spirit just to, because it should set itself up organically to me. If it doesn't, then then it doesn't connect. So I love it that it already, when you do that, you're like, oh, well, it should, because that, that's what we're seeing. So it's just it's just another witness to what's transacting. So it's just, mm -hmm. just me sitting on the sidelines. Yeah. So the door, the door to life, the judges are coming to those who procrastinated and loitered around. And so I just, I love it. And it gives me, gets me teary eyed because this is such a message of hope and it doesn't matter where you're at because father mm -hmm. source loves us so much that mm -hmm. these judges are going to come and bring the message. So it doesn't really matter where you're at, whether you were winnowed or if you're going to be threshed, the message is still coming regardless. So, yeah. And then was there something else you wanted to add? Oh, there's lots I could add. I just don't want to take too much time. It's just because it can, it, everything is a spiral. Everything is moving in degrees. <laughs> And it's just, it's solely dependent on our perspective that we can release, but I don't want to take the, the, the verse off track of, of what I'm seeing because it's just, we can go ether pretty quick, but um, because every word is so powerful of potentiality, but we need to follow in, in its measure of what it's speaking here. So I'll, I'll be, I'll just leave it at that. I'll just continue, please. Okay. <laughs> Excuse yeah. me. The only other thing that I would like to add to this word judge is that part of this um, in the word is talking about a quarrel. 
And it's interesting because that word in its root, Dalit Noon, that there's a there's a quarrel that's happening in, in life. And when we look at the noon, the noon itself has duality in it because it's a risen noon and it's a fallen noon. So you have the mm-hmm. spiritual path and you have the material path and there's quarreling between the two of them, you know, a wrestling that is happening. And what comes to bring resolve to this is the power from the vision when it's placed on the inside, Mm -hmm. you know? So when, when the teachers and the judges come and they can bring that, that vision of this becoming of the process of raising ourselves up from being poor and destitute to actually becoming a sovereign leader over our heads, because that's really what the rush is all about is talking about sovereignty So when the judges come, they're bringing the vision to make this happen. This is literally the power, means, and direction that is placed on the inside of you to be able to deal with the quarrel that you have within you regarding your fallen flesh. And this is directly connected to our ego and our beast ego and the things that we struggle with. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to bypass that part as, as another intricate part to be able to see the resolve. Cause like I said, every Hebrew and Aramaic word has a resolve already within it. If you have the eyes to see it, if you're struggling with something, all you need to do is look at the word, look at the letters and you'll find the answer you need to move out of your stuck place. Mm. Absolutely. And, and, and again, that same perspective, either grasping the door on the outside to enter in looking at the door or entering into see as the door. Right. Because that's perspective, right? Well, because the doors are coming to open the revelation to you. Absolutely. And so if you're on the inside of the door, this is where we even have parental um, definitions of right guidance, because if you're on the inside of the door, you're able to give the vision uh, to progeny. Exactly. Because of the noon, that's exactly what it means to produce an heir. Right. And so and this is where we get... (laughs) Because and the wrestle even morphs even more because that noon is also um, uh, perpetuity. It means everlastingness because life was meant to be everlasting. So dependent on perspective, if you are the door and because everything is progressional become until you've become a summational total, we are wrestling with what is perpetuity forever. And so everything. So but if we do things right, as a teacher, we give the vision for progeny, right? So they can continue. This is right airship, right parental direction. And then that continues. And then we move our wrestle into the higher wrestle of the finish work that really pulverizes the gold and your understanding or comprehending perpetuity. So having said that, the other aspect of this word right here is... uh, these two letters that's the gematria for yod literally that means hand and it means work and deed so the work and deed of the door is to be able to bring forth and adjudicate to bring forth life to those that are in the fallen flesh nature and so i'm i'm always looking at this going what would our world be like if we had been raised in chill as children to say that our ultimate goal is to learn to become one. And I'm going to help assist you with your Mm -hmm. ego because it's an important training tool, but we need to take it up a little higher. And if we were all raised in that, what kind of a different world would be, we would be living in, which to me is an exact, my thought is like, Oh, we're talking about the new earth here. You know, if, if everyone is getting to that place where mother's teaching is already like null and void, everybody's operating already in the golden rule, like mm-hmm. everyone. And then we take it one step higher. So you're already in the golden rule and now we're lifting it up into the principle of oneness and we raise our children up mm-hmm. in that principle from when they first come. Absolutely. Like that's such an amazing concept. So the work and the deed of the hand as a judge is to be able to do that because we're we're born in the fallen flesh with our ego attached, which is just a catalyst. And that that complements yeah. the word above it because this is how 
we, we do really well to remember that I, when I start losing track of where I am, when I get caught in the ether, what, 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 this is all ether language here, yet it's still speaking of a foundational concept, but I always draw back to the essence of family because everything is about family, that the, this whole template of Hebrew and the essence of the entities of letters are family that are coming into agreement, mutual consent to, be, to form a word. And so what Carrie just even stated was, who are these, right? Because this is all about the separation of the brotherhood of light. Mm -hmm. And so that is true family, the yeah. brotherhood of light. Exactly. Yeah. That's really good. So then leading us to the next word. So we, you know, obviously talked about what the judges are, the gardeners that are coming. Now this leads us to uh, bridegroom, what they've translated as bridegroom. And I love this because it's important for us to really grasp a hold of what this is saying to us. Bridegroom is actually, this is meant to be. So the word bridegroom, it means to tie, connect, to covenant, to enter into the family, good segue, become connected as bridegroom. So bridegroom, this is this is why I highlighted this in the blue. This word here means yeah. betrothal because betrothal is already the place as if you're already married. So the only thing that hasn't happened, and, and again, this is connected to the ancient Hebrew where, wedding, because really in the betrothal state, you are already joined together as one. You just haven't consummated yet. You haven't brought forth the intimate part of it, but yet you are already connected as if you are already married. Mm. And I, I think that is so beautiful. And it is really important. And, and so then when you look at the word, you can actually see this already because het tov is the Aramaic word for one. So in Hebrew, um, well, actually, I'll, I'll say this. Aramaic has two forms of one. They have kod or chod, het dalet, so different than this, not the kof dalet, but het dalet meaning one. But then they have a het tov also meaning one. So again, these are one of those things that unless you were looking at the language, you wouldn't realize if somebody was using the word one in translation in English, mm -hmm. you wouldn't know which one they're talking about. Is it the het dalit, the separation in the door, or is it talking about the separation, the covenant of life through the covenant tov being marked with it? So this means becoming one with the covenant of love. Which, of course, that makes sense because this is the betrothal. Of course, this is going to be that, the covenant of love, that you're marked with that. This is so beautiful. I get so emotional when I look at this because I'm, I'm such a word person. It's like my, my love language is words of affirmation. And every time I look at scripture, like I said, I think the last time that every time I look at love at, at scripture, it's a love language and a love letter that's been written to me. And I get to look at these treasures when I dig them out. So this is speaking of the betrothal in the covenant of love in becoming one. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, you actually have another word that is in here that the Tav Nun Aleph, which means a teacher. He learned and he taught. So this is a different form. We already have the Aleph, which we know that is kept. That is within the Aleph itself, the teachers of oneness. But this is one that is coming. And I know you're going to have stuff to add to this word. <laughs> I'm feeling Ken already. He's like, ooh, this is a good one. He may not mm -hmm. show it outwardly, but I'm feeling it. So I, I'm, I'm going to turn it over to him in a minute. But this word is a teacher who is learned. He learned or she learned. And so they're teaching. Mm -hmm. And and it also means, and I love this because it's so connected to Hebrew. He repeated inculcation. So over and over and over again, when we dig in the language, we can see this principle of oneness that is spoken of repeatedly and about family repeatedly and about the judging that is all meant to restore, you know, the door to life. And I love that. And then let's see, what is the other thing? Okay, now I'm going to turn it over to Ken to be able to talk about. Ken. 
Um, that. Yeah, we because can, this is really only missing the yod. Yeah, but be, well, it's missing <laughs> the yod because they have become established as one. Right. So that's why the yod is not there because the olive mm -hmm. is added. But it, this is a complete, if it's bridegroom, then it's already manifested as the presence through separating, separating out. Because, well, this is a loaded word right here. I know I can already say it, that, but I have to be careful because. Um, We've already, I've already talked about it. Okay. Several times. Okay. Because, well, I'm not, not that I'm cautious for the sake of the listeners. I'm just like extrapolation. We're looking at poetry. This whole, this is all poetry that is, um, but again, if, if we release poetry and we go into the deeper realms of poetry and no one comprehends it, then we're really losing the aspect of what the teacher is supposed to do. So we need to be careful that we don't go too ether because everything is expressing everything. I, we could express the whole Aleph Bet in one word because it's all connected. And so um, I, before I go into the sea monster part that, the spirit told me a while ago that we see everything in in two dimensions right the flat but if we can we're allowed to connect that all of to the head because everything's circular in the hebrew and so really it's in a straight line but really if i was to draw a circle around that 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 head and that all of the olive would touch the, the front of the head because it's a circle really and so it would say the brotherhood of love has risen as one mm. Um, now that's just that's father's teaching that would say you're mm -hmm. after you learn mother's way you're allowed to see the completion circle now why do i say that because the jackal and the sea monster is di directly connected to the ouroboros this is the completed circle that allows you to see as father would see as a completed one because one equates as a circle a completed circle is one and so these are those that have become the sea monster of revelation or the dragon of revelation or the, or the dragon right or the beast of revelation because they are the full summation of the measure of intention to rise up and out adorned, adorned and bedecked in the authority of the tenfold mantle and the spirits the seven spirits of the father now that's a loaded thing right there because for for this for the sea monster to arise it will have the adornment of completion of one and so that measure and so we can go to many scriptures with that without going there right now but i know that anyone that thinks in the bible terms right well what are the seven spirits and what is the tenfold anointing because we're going in what the ten heads and the seven horns but it's it's really it's the hundredfold to a thousandfold to the ten thousandfold absolutely and i believe we shared that in last week's teaching that most people aren't aware well a they're not aware of the thousandfold measure right yet alone the ten thousandfold measure yeah yeah so we have to comprehend mother <laughs> first teaches us the hundredfold going up the right hand side separating out correctly het to become the brotherhood of love is the th completed as a thousandfold measure. Yeah. That comes down in the anointed of the 10 time measure of 10,000. That's the left hand ascending up the right, coming down the left, completes the circle, and then is now a 10,000 fold measure. So, really, we can then equate the dragon, the sea monster, as completion. It's nothing to fear other than these ones are self-adjudicated ones that have separated out as the measure of judges they will be adorned and bedecked as one in light but they'll be cloaked in black because that's the sackcloth in the ashes of the judges that are coming now whether it is a true adornment of black no it's a frequency that says these are the judge magistrate that's why we have representation of the black garments in our judge uh, judicial system that it says that you are qualified light within and the garments of black without that is true right rule and reign of magistry because there's no partiality right it's like they they're adjudicating from the place of neutrality which the very first word showed us that right the cough dollet. So grasping the door. It is simply representation of within, so without. They are mm -hmm. completely brilliant within in the full illumination of what is and what is not. Het. Because they've comprehended as the brotherhood of light, risen themselves, self-delivered through the template by separating what is and what is not. Yep. And they stand in the measure of one. That yep. is what a seat, that's what the dragon is. They know. This is and it's the jackal as well. So we've even connected to that. Tan and tanine is there is we're, we're not gonna get into this part no, of it no, because it goes I too need, deep. 
I need to yeah, keep moving. But, but yes, and this is a whole teaching that is coming out. Uh, the, the jackal, the fox, the dragon, the sea monster, Anubis, all of these things are incremental in gatherings that allow you to speak as really as a measure of love uh, through right appropriation. So um, that is the bridegroom. The bridegroom is a summational total. It's uh, you are wed and you are um, in the full measure of one. Sorry, yeah. we're Mishka's in here and she was chewing on something. So we're just pen. trying to find out what she was chewing on. So she was chewing on a pen, mm. an ink pen. <laughs> I was like, why am I hearing crunching? There shouldn't be crunching. <laughs> Hopefully she didn't eat the pen. Maybe she, like she ate some of the plastic. Oh, well, well, if she ate no. the plastic, it'll move through. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dog that's uh -huh. what they do yeah. so anyway this word i mean we went on and on and about it but this word bridegroom is huge we didn't even touch it well we did enough we yeah. did enough yeah. to be able to continue through yeah. continuity but like ken said i mean everything is connected to everything i mean that's the olive the olive is all in forensic work is simply scratching at the crown before it can be adorned it has to be unearthed correctly before it can be excavated out to be put upon exactly so moving on, now we actually have sleep and slumber. And I found this interesting because we have two different words for sleep and slumber. And um, we have the, the noon mem as one of them. And then we have the vav dalit mem cough as another one. So, you know, many times, again, in, in English translations, you wouldn't be seeing these things. And so you would have, you really wouldn't have an idea um, until you do the forensic excavation to be able to take a look and see what it's speaking to us, what the letters are speaking to us as they become the teaching shepherds. So in this place of sleep, the definition of this word talks about slumber and being drowsy, um, sleep and slumbering, um, and it, it's connected to the spiritual path. That's why the noon is here. Um, but so in other words, okay, so the resolve in the static position, because again, this word is in potential. This is in source creator, zero point, entering into rest. So it's not a bad word or a good word. It's a neutral word. And so it's saying that the spiritual path is what leads you to the waters of peace, because now this is father's teaching. This is the mem that has been revealed. Whereas on this last word here, just showing people, I'm going to actually go back to um, here so I can highlight better. So this is the completed works of the living water. And this is mother that has to be presented. Father is always behind the mem because the mem is made of the two letters, the mem and the mem so feet. So in this verse, father is showing up. And we're seeing that this is place of zero point, the place where we've entered rest. So this word right here is saying, find the spiritual path that is going to bring you life and now put you in the waters above instead of the waters below that will complete your journey and you're now in zero point as source Absolutely. And that's also, yeah, and <clears throat> another word to say that is perpetuity. Mm -hmm. So you are on in, in rest for all of perpet, but again. And you're in perpetual motion, right? Right. Everything, the energy is there because that's what zero point is, is, is potential energy that is always perpetual right? You're, without distortion. Yeah. You're at the rest from the work because you produce the measure of intention yeah. and therefore you can rest from your work and you're in the next product because we, we're only limited in our perspective. So I don't know what the next part of the journey is. What does that look like? Because I'm not there, but you can rest from the, from the work that got you to the measure of perpetuity. And so <laughs> now you're into the next phase of things and so that's really what that's saying so welcome to the peaceful waters of the high mountain meadows 
So connecting it to the word before, the purpose of the bridegroom is connecting you to the betrothal period so that you can enter into the place of rest, right. that you've completed it. So that's that's what the job is of that the, those who are coming to instruct you, to bring you life which is in the place where, and what I love about this too, is this is allowing us to connect to the fact that mankind was put into slumber. And I was looking at this because Ken was sharing in um, a couple teachings ago about how when Adam was put into a deep slumber, when Chava was taken out of Adam, it never said that he was woke up. <laughs> Adam, mankind is still slumbering. And, and so this is actually telling you <laughs> again. And so the word is Tartime. So this, and which is the same word that was given to Abraham with the covenant of the pieces. He was put into what they called a trance. Same word, Tartime, used with Adam and used with Avraham. And so this is the resolve. Oh, my gosh. Cat. <laughs> um, <laughs> We got a freaking zoo in our house. <laughs> our cat just did a total Mufafa, Mufasa. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, is, I'm sure he's looking at there, trying to figure out what the heck Ran just it happened. In. Ran it in. Sorry. Yes. We we have we have the window open in our bedroom and we don't normally do it because it's connected to the breezeway of the motel and so we just don't necessarily want people walking by the bedroom and looking in and the cat's yeah. like ooh there's something new I need to check it out it didn't, <laughs> didn't work out so well for him <laughs> okay <laughs> reeling it back in <laughs> so the resolve again in the place of source and zero point perpetual energy is. It's telling you that even though mankind was put into a sleep and a slumber, the resolve is the spiritual path that is going to lead you to the still waters of completion. So, and um, anyway, so I, I figured that I, I would just, I would put that in there because of, of previous in Ken sharing that, mm -hmm. and, and that's why many people will say, well, I woke up. Well, it's connected to the slump that mankind was put into twice, once through Abraham and once through um, through Adam, um, because Adam is is a representation. It wasn't just a man. It's a representation of mankind that had Chava pulled out. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for life connecting back to it again. And mm -hmm. hence why the bridegroom is bringing that to those who sleep and slumber. That mem could also be just, again, everything's perspective. So that could always be risen to sealed waters, right? Because that's mm -hmm. a sealed mem. Mm -hmm. And so that could be a well that has been capped. Like until mm -hmm. we are until we are full, we're impartial. And so the glass is always, or the top of the well is exposed because everything's about distillation and in, 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 in drips and drops. And the measure is gathered but as soon as it's gathered and it's called completed it's then sealed up and that is now a full container called full right this is the full potential measure and this is again ties into a tov really because it's like you are now sealed totally enclosed and to rest yeah which we see in the the word above right so now moving on to the last two words of this and this is why uh very profound in looking at this because this right here is the Hebrew word for bride. The Aramaic word for bride is kaflamed, but kaflamed is also the Aramaic word for crown. So in this, we can see that we're talking to everyone entirely, that they are meant to be the bride. They don't realize they are, are because they, they need instruction to come to them, hence the lamed, in order to reveal to them the power that comes from the Father who is graciously giving to them who are willing to receive it to everything that they need to deal with their fallen flesh. And so, again, this is a progression from mother teaches you how to be the bride. The father teaches you to get you ready for betrothal, which we we're talking about up here. And so the whole teaching from the age of zero to 12 is to get you to become the bride, to be become betrothed. And then from 12 on 
until the place of maturation, the father is teaching you how to enter into intimacy, into getting you ready to become queen. Because on the ancient Hebrew, I know I'm repeating a lot, and I know that you know this, uh, Regina, but again, inculcation, that that on the day of the wedding itself is when the king and the queen are actually given their title as king and queen. They would call the bride and groom on the day of the wedding. They called them king and queen because they were entering into their place of sovereignty because they were joining with one another. The, the bride was leaving her house to join with the groom's house and they were becoming one as sovereigns. So this is the place of being coming crowned as well. And this is the instruction, the revelation that's coming from the father to give us what we need, the power, means, and direction to deal with our fallen flesh through the work and deed of our hand that has been, it's been graciously given to us. And so we graciously receive it so that we can then also return and give it. Absolutely. And so it's, it, this is such a beautiful word yeah. in seeing it. And the root of it is just Kof Lamed. Yeah. Kalal. Yeah. Um, this is also the because the hay is in the heart this would actually equate to as those of the book of revelation these are the revealed mm -hmm. and so as the completed they mm -hmm. are revealed in the power and authority as the vision that is arisen right or it teaches how to arise because mm -hmm. this already because it's connected to the bridegroom and the bride it's already stating that this is completion mm -hmm. they have grasped the teaching light the shepherd become an order right as the completed doors which goes right to the very beginning that talks right. about the cough the, co the cough dollar so these are the right. ones again so again perspective grasping the door like what is this store entering in wait a minute i've learned a way through inculcation which really breaks down to um the treading and the marching out of inculcation and now they become the completed measure of of revelation fully revealed in the power and authority and if they're in the earth still then that noon is simply that it tells them that they are in the earth as a representation as father mother as one as a, as judges in the earth mm -hmm. in the material realm in the material realm yeah absolutely because we're manifested here in our material flesh yes in the material yeah. realm and then we end this word with sleep. And I am going to do a second verse because it's really important I, that, that we connect all of this to something that spirit gave to me to connect this blew me away. This word sleep is actually a euphemism, meaning to die and to lie in the grave, which I find that very interesting. And, uh, and technically they don't have it written this way. Um, but this cough here would have been in a fallen position. So the kaf pay, and this is why I just, I love what you can see in the letters because this kaf pay, since it's supposed to be, they didn't have it through their, um, when their computer program, but in Aramaic, this would have been a fallen kaf. This is the mouth that is speaking words that are in the fallen nature, which is this sleep is to lie in the grave that these words don't really bring you life. Not the ones of the fallen language. What is meant to come are the ones that are going to rise you up through the revelation that is coming through the elevated languages that have a vibratory frequency to them, whereas the dead language is the English because it literally, through the study of cymatics, doesn't have a vibrational frequency to it. It's a dead language. I mean, we speak it as the alpha language, alphabet, but it doesn't produce what we need to. It doesn't bring life to the blood, Dalit Mel.
And so it, the fallen languages will not bring you the power that is found within the blood because this is the door to the living waters of mother and father's teaching where the power resides. But again, as a fallen cough, it, it's not going to do anything to activate what is in our blood because we've already shared. And I even showed through the languages that blood is congealed light. Mm -hmm. So the English narrative is never going to activate the power of the light that's within the blood. And that is why, that's why there are those that are going to be sleeping that are in this death sleep to lie in the grave because they're, they're not rising up, you know, it's so sleep is in the blood, <laughs> sleep is in the blood. So there's the sleep, the tardame that was put upon us that has something to do with our DNA. And that's why I put something up here earlier that there was DNA manipulation with the ribose of what had happened with Adam and mankind to lower us and to dim us because yeah. in our DNA, the code is actually within our DNA that is waiting to be, uh, to be aroused awake. And it's through these teachings of compressing light. Now, is this the only way? No. And I say that repeatedly because I don't want people to think that they absolutely have to learn Aramaic because there's many ways to find this. Mm -hmm. But people that are drawn to the language or people like me specifically, I am word oriented. I, I'm, I'm huge word oriented and it's tied directly to my heart. And so for me, these words bring life to me. These are the compressing of light within my blood that are activating codes that are within me because it's raising up my consciousness level. And like for Ken, when he gets everything spirit, this helps bring it and tie the spirit ether to the earth in order to create a bridge and a ladder to be able to ascend up to those lofty concepts that spirit brings. So <clears throat> these two words right here too, again, just through spirit, just looking at them, that because it's tied to death, that and if we can see that because it's already speaking about the bridegroom and the bride and in its entirety and its whole and its completion that these pierced ones have because it goes right to the beginning again because the whole verse is a circle so these pierced ones that have become the door the completed mothers have grasped death correctly so because they're the full expression of life it's right in here as well because they wouldn't be this measure of completion unless they've comprehended death correctly again as it or as it right as at it or as it is simply a perspective but the death perspective in the lesser narrative of what the world defines it is it's to lie in the grave that's the perspective it's like death is this but really when again within us all is a measure is an anointing that is seeking revelation incrementally to express itself in generosity but it but it's so sensitive in measure that it's requesting us and requiring us to have an intimate uh, intimate interaction with these letters at least from this perspective and in that interaction it's allowing us to grasp the true meaning of death because it starts to change and you're able to see that oh death is simply the experience while we're, we're already in death and we're experiencing death until it morphs <laughs> into life so these pierced ones here that have become the doors the completed mothers are seeing death correctly because they are truly life they grasp right here right. life <clears throat> over death life over death so death isn't what we think it is because it's an illusion and it's so, right? right tied to our fallen flesh but it is dependent upon our perspective exactly so exactly. death death could be lying in the grave to one but it can simply be oh I, it's simply this the, i'm shedding my fallen flesh right the lesser must give way to the greater that's what this is it's showing a greater potential of reality so we can see what death is truly to grasp it to know it must give way to the greater life exactly that's really good yes that's good